Hi everyone, it's Dr. Brown here, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the review process. This is a bit of a special shout out to the Facebook group, Reviewer 2 Must Be Stopped, uh, in which you can kind of read some of the horrors of reviewing. Um, our students are right now going through the process of getting their final thesis works together, and a lot of them are moving them, hopefully, towards some form of uh, publication. And I thought that this would be a great chance uh, to talk a little bit about what is a review process and why is it inside of science and technology. The review process is supposed to have value for both sides. I also do reviews of papers. Uh, part of this is in order to understand what's going on inside of my field. It's also from the standpoint of wanting to help fellow people within my field understand the field better, to make their papers better. And so you can kind of see this not as a grading scheme necessarily, or just an evaluation, but it's also a process of feedback back to the author under the hopes that they make those changes. Conversely, the author is hoping that the reviewer actually provides meaningful feedback. And where we see a lot of these issues of reviewer two needing to be stopped is they're violating this sort of contract that happens. And really we can also see this as a bit of a work contract because I'm providing a paper to be reviewed, which is then reviewed by a bunch of other academics who at some point might write a paper that I then review as well. So we're kind of helping each other out in a roundabout way. Putting these calamitous actions aside, and you can read probably a lot more about them, let's take a look at what can I do as a student or a junior academic receiving my first reviews. Step one is to try to keep away the emotional aspects of this. Yes, you've worked very hard on this work. However, reading the reviews for the first time, especially when it's off of a rejection, can be quite painful. I use a three pen system to go through my reviews. The first pen is completely black. It is a black Sharpie. The reason I have this is for anything I completely disagree with, or anything that the reviewer is saying that is beyond the pale of what should occur in a review. This is basically my whiteout for anything I don't like. I just black it out. Don't need to deal with it. Second pen is what I call the yellow pen. The yellow pen is anything that is going to take me a while to think about. Maybe there's a certain aspect where it's a question in my philosophy or methodology or in terms of my statistics where I'm going to have to go and find some resources and look at this further. Those I highlight in yellow for fix later. And finally, I have a green pen. The green pen is for anything which I completely agree with the reviewer and that can be easily done within the day that I get back my review. The more time that a paper sits on your desk and not on a review desk, the more time you are basically wasting in academia. So receiving reviews back from conferences or from journals, you want to, as quickly as possible, address the reviewer's concerns and send it on, either back to the same journal for another round, back to the same journal for publication, or onto some other journal in the case of a rejection. So this system allows me to very quickly basically triage what's happening inside of the review and prevents me from getting too emotionally attached to such attacks. The review process is full of rejection. This is a standard part of what we do as academics. We pretty much are told no quite a bit, but the nice thing when it comes to publications is that all it takes is one person to say yes. So good luck with your paper and as always stay safe and wash your hands. Hamna Aslam and I have written a new book. It's on various issues inside of playtesting how to effectively use dice, and other ways that you can make board games much more fun for your players. If you're interested, then go and check it out here.
Only you can stop reviewer number two.